Good morning. Uh, my name is Dave Medbury. And if you're not here to build a community, you're in the wrong place. And if you are here to build a community, you probably want to get close and be like a community, although it is Atlanta. You might be hot and sticky just from walking here. So wherever you sit is fine. Uh, I'm not expecting very many people, though. So if, if we fill this room, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, so how do you build a community? Well, I want to welcome you to the Colorado OpenStack Meetup on the road, and that's why the name badges were out front. That's what we do at our meetups, so that you get to see somebody you don't know and learn their name very quickly. Of course, we have the same thing with our badges here, but I've got my little sticker on. I'll take that off now since I've said my name, and you can find me in the agenda. They say it makes the filming better if I don't have it on. Um, uh, let's see. So again, welcome to the uh, Colorado OpenStack Meetup on the road. And I'll, I'll get my clicker and I'll be better prepared now. What is an OpenStack community? An OpenStack community is a lot of things. It's developers, it's enterprises. That floor out there is dedicated to those enterprises. It's users, it's seekers, it's really people. It's about people, individuals with a somewhat common interest, that interest might be a development interest, it may be a problem you're trying to solve, but we, we, we've come to OpenStack as a people because we have an interest in OpenStack. Folks with a wide range of experience, interests, and needs. Um, your needs today, maybe somebody else's needs tomorrow, and you might have experience to offer them. So that, that's, that's, that's why we come together. Um, but how does an OpenStack community address those needs? Well, this, this is how I do it. By listening, prompting, proposing, teaching, iterating back through those items again, crafting activities, and being open to new ideas, new needs, and different perspectives. So what do you need? What do you need? Raise your hand. What do you need out of an OpenStack community? You get started by asking questions. <laughs> um, what, what does somebody else need? I'll, I'll get to how we get started in a couple slides, though. Um, and, and any questions? No questions? OK. I'll call on you. That's part of what the name badge is about, right? I can't see your show badges from here, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do pointing, OK? Presto, you right in this room, you right in this room became a community. You're a community right now. It's, it's an ad hoc, temporary community, but you're here. And this session will be run just as if we were having an OpenStack meetup in Colorado or your neighborhood, which is why I asked you to put on a name tag. I said I, said I would explain that to somebody asked earlier. I said, that, that's the explanation right there. All right. Um, I, I do, you guys know it's being streamed live on YouTube from uh, the OpenStack Summit. I'm also streaming it live right from my computer as well, um, so that my Colorado people that are remote are right here with me. Form a meetup or similar group. That is the way you get started, okay? If you want to start a community, you start it. If you want to start a community, you start it. Um, I say meetup, I know that's a trademark, proprietary thing, but it is also pervasive, dominant. It is, it is the de facto way to do this. Um, it gives you discoverability. That's probably the biggest thing it gives you. Um, people come to my meetup, they don't know me at all. All they said was, I wonder if there's anything in Colorado, and bingo, I come to the top of the list. It allows people to register and personalize, so they've done all the social networking back end for you. Uh, provides querying and other tools. I can, pull, I can pull the meetup people. I can ask for leaders or speakers, et cetera. Um, easy group contacts. I can, I can contact the whole list. There's a man I've been looking for this week. Stefano, this one's yours. Um, so th 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 that's how you, that's, that's the best way to start. Um, I, I think there's a lot of ways. You could start it as a, a Google group or Google Hangout as well, but a meetup pretty much does all the, all the legwork for you. I, they're not sponsoring me. <laughs> so how else do you get started? Propose an initial topic. 
send out a ba send out a meeting date and bang that it's just that easy you might not have anybody sign up but you don't know you will actually have people sign up i guaranteed it you do need to find a facility or set up a conferencing system but that's just a detail you, you we, we're technologists we can solve that problem uh, matt did you have something to say this is matt fisher from the colorado openstack meetup Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about facilities. So in Colorado, we have a, a, a range of facilities we can use. One of the favorites is to go to your local uh, uh, brewer, and they might have a community room. So you could meet at Odell's in Fort Collins. You could meet at New Belgium. You could meet at uh, the Fort Collins, what's it called, the Fort Collins Brewer? Uh, they've got one of the nicest meeting rooms. Uh, we actually have a lot of them at libraries. You can have them at universities. You can have them at businesses. We'll talk more about that later. The predominant choice these days is to have them at businesses. They have nice mics. They have nice big screens. Um, they have nice chairs. And they bring something else to the table. They bring food. You mentioned to uh, send out a meeting request. Who do you send it to, right? And you don't have a distribution list? What's... Okay, so, so there's, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how you do some uh, uh, promotion of your meetup, but the, really the best way is to go, go to the meetup page. Um, I, I'll go to the link in a little bit and you'll see how easy it is. Literally, once you create a meetup, if you know one or two people, just send it to them. Um, ask them to ask them to join your meetup, um, but it will it will actually people go looking for these things. That's the crazy part. You don't understand. You might want a meetup in your neighborhood, and there isn't one. All you have to do is create it. Let's let's go to the next slide. I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, here's an example. San Antonio is a natural, maybe the most natural hub for OpenStack outside of the Bay Area. It's probably the number two spot. That's where Rackspace is, guys. But there was no active OpenStack meetup. It lagged, people stopped attending, and it just di dried up. Someone in San Antonio asked me how to get it started. And so what did I tell them? I said, propose an initial topic, <laughs> send out a meeting, and it's just that easy. And what did they actually do, though? Bang, done, it's just that easy. That's exactly what he did. They announced and held their meetup. Uh, he asked me two months ago. They already held their first meetup. It was good interest, good attendance. It was a good community. Um, there were other people that said, why did the meetup drive it? Nobody took action. It takes one person to start a meetup, and the meetup happens. I guarantee it. I, I guess if you're in, I grew up in rural Kansas. I would have a hard time getting a meetup going there. It would have to be, it would have to be a virtual meetup. Okay, and that's kind of the extended geography part. Uh, Kevin, wh what's up? That's a really good question. All right, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to, a, back to a slide, all right? Propose an initial topic. So you've got to come up, if you want to form a community, Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, Stefano. Uh, the question was, how do you come up with a topic? All right. So as a person, uh, we've got a lot of persons in here. You either want to know something, want to talk about something, or want to find somebody that uh, uh, has a broad range of experience. It's, you're probably in one of those three camps. If you want to learn about something, say, I want to have a, a, an investigative meetup about Cinder. All right? So then you could have a sender meeting, right? You might not know anything about it, but somebody that comes will know something about it. And so you could just have a discussion. You don't have to have a speaker. You have to have a topic pretty much, but you don't have to have a speaker. You guys can just sit around a table real close and say, okay, I know there's this sender thing that I'm supposed to be doing. I really don't see what the point is. Or well, let's go to a different topic. I've got Glance. What, what is Glance? It just seems like it's just another distribution thing. I, I can get right ahead Glance. I can get so so you can you you can have a little informal discussion at your first meetup, okay? But at the end of your first meetup, you want to ask for topics. What do you, what do you want to hear about next month? Do you know somebody that wants to talk? So so you 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 are the leader, but you're really the facilitator. All right. 
Is that, so that, that, that's one way. Um, the other way, I guess the other thing at the first meetup, you could just introduce OpenStack and some of the key, the key pieces. Okay, here's OpenStack, but in general, you wanna look at compute, you wanna look at object store, and maybe some networking, you know? And then kind of talk about it a little bit. Oh, anybody can do that. And there's tons of, tons of tools on uh, OpenStack.org to help you out. Okay. Um, bang done, it's just that easy. Uh, they had a meetup in April 4th, I think. Um, the guy talked to me in March. He actually came out uh, to Colorado on business, talked to me just on the side between meetings, said, you know, I know you do meetups. What is that? And, and that's how it did it. He got it going again the next month. Colorado um, is not the Bay Area, it's not New York, it's not Atlanta. Um, Denver's pretty big, but a lot of the tech community sits outside of Denver. HP's had a long presence in Fort Collins, Colorado, and Colorado Springs, which are neither one in Denver, you'll notice. Um, so we're extended kind of vertically or north to south uh, along the Front Range Mountains, right? And so we've got to do things a little bit different. Uh, we work a little bit harder. So uh, several years ago, I started a meetup, and it was called the OpenStack Colorado Meetup. Um, but there was a discovery, discovery issue, so another guy started the Denver Meetup, not knowing that there was a Colorado Meetup, because he assumed if there was a meetup, it would be in Denver, but it wasn't. So uh, we got together, though, eventually. Um, but you might be in even a more remote area. Like if you were in Laramie, Wyoming, that's where I went to college, it's too far to go to Denver for uh, a, an evening event. Um, and so you might be the only OpenStack guy there, but you'll find somebody in the university somewhere doing big data, doing uh, Python, uh, doing other cloud. Maybe they're doing um, EC2. Maybe they're doing uh, VMware. You'll find a natural connection, and you can pull people in from those groups. And with Meetup, you can actually uh, advertise, I don't know, promote your group. Uh, with, from within their meetups. It, it's, it's very easy to do. So pretty much no matter where you are and what your size is, you can get a community going. Um, and you just have to do a little bit more work if you're not a natural hub. Um, let's see, there's two meetups. They were formed independently. Each met a need for education, information, promotion, uh, experience. And now we're stronger by working together. Um, the, uh, the other meetup host is actually in a different session right now, or he'd probably be in the room. I don't know, Scott, are you in the room? No, I don't see him. Okay, uh, he's doing sessions. Uh, he works, I think he works for VMware right now. Um, so he's probably, he might be at the VMware booth. And uh, he runs the Denver one. I run the one that's north of Denver, basically. Um, we've not had any requests from Colorado Springs, but we have had Colorado Springs people drive up. So it's, it's not too bad. Um, and, and there's ways to make it better. You might want to go online. And that's another solution. This is actually a bigger group right now. Okay, this is as big as the largest group I've ever physical meetup I've hosted. All right? Uh, not counting the people that are online right now. So anybody old school military might have heard of a VTCN. That's old days, video teleconferencing. We don't do that anymore. We do things like WebEx, virtual rooms, Connect, or my personal favorite, Hangouts. And I don't know if you remember the old Paul, Paul Molov commercial, but you're soaking in it right now. This is streaming live on YouTube via Hangout. Um, it's also being streamed, I think, live or tape delayed on the OpenStack Summit page as well. Each has the ability to not only reach an extended audience, but provide feedback, uh, playback later. Um, I can't make it to everything that goes on in Denver, but I can watch their WebEx the next day and be right up to date. Um, I can attend the WebEx remotely if I'm out of town and even give feedback live in the meeting, and that happens every single time. Uh, and, and if you're an open source purist, and some of us are, uh, you can also use Big Blue Button. Big Blue Button is an open source video streaming teleconference teleeducation tool that works not quite as slick as some of these others, but it works very well, and we actually used it when I worked at Canonical. Um, all work and no play makes OpenStack a dull boy. You need to have a party atmosphere, occasionally. A beer bash, occasionally. If you can get a brew pub to sponsor your meetup, you're gonna have good attendance. You're gonna have really good attendance. Uh, 
if you can get uh, a pizza joint to sponsor your meetup, you're going to have a pretty good attendance. Uh, throw Frisbees. All right. Uh, who's got a question for me? Nobody's got a question. Nobody else wants a Frisbee, I guess. In the back somewhere. Take that. Woo! All right. So building a community, you, you want to be social, right? That, that, that's, that's part of what it gets. Um, as, a, as, a, as a meetup leader, you actually do have to call on people in the back row. Kenneth, got any questions about Open Jack? You're good right now. Okay, well, it's good to see you. It's good to see you at my Colorado meetup. Ah, that's, that's a darn good question. How do you connect to an existing community? My number one, there's, there's two, two good answers. Number one, go to openstack.org and look for a community because they're, they're posted there, and I'll get to that in a page if I haven't already. I'll go back to it if I, if I haven't. Uh, number two, just go to meetup.com and search. There's a very good search tool right on meetup.com. You'll probably find a meetup. You might also just go on IRC. Hey, IRC, you know what that is. I know you do. Uh, just go to hash OpenStack and say, is there anybody in uh, Char Charlotte that is doing OpenStack right now? I'd like to come and talk to you. Is there a meetup going on? Should we swarm one? You can be, you can be the man. You know more about it than 99.99% .99 of people in Charlotte. I, I could probably add two more nines to that. Uh, you got to build your community, but you also got to make it stronger. You, you get, forming it's actually the easy part. You got to keep it going. Um, so you need to ask someone else to lead the meeting, give a talk, okay? And you got to build the leadership. I've got, you've seen me talk to a few people in here. I've got some people I can go to if I'm out of town. Um, that will be happy to sit in for me, even, or if I get sick, you know, whatever. Um, so, so you need to build the leadership. Um, you need to re-ask once again for needs. Who's got a question? What, are the, what do you need out of an OpenStack community? Raise your hand if you have a question. I can't throw Frisbees today, okay. Uh, so ask again for needs and input. Ask at the end of every session, okay? Do an install fest, all right? I don't know, I'm an old Linux guy, so we did install fest. We did them on Saturdays. We did them at universities. We did them at civic centers. Everybody would bring in their computer. We would slam dunk that computer, get rid of Windows, and load OpenStack, oh, uh, Linux. Now we'll do it with DevStack. Uh, you could do it with a number of things. Um, and if you want to do an all day thing, do a dev stack, a simple dev stack in the morning. And for those people that are interested, do a bug squash in the afternoon. You've already got dev stack loaded. You're ready to go. You can become a developer in one day. Have your first commit. Get an invitation to Paris. All right. Uh, look for low-hanging fruit when you do that. You don't want to try and solve the uh, uh, cross-tenancy problems in, your new, in, in everybody's Neutron as they go to VX lands in that afternoon session because you'll lose people. But look for a documentation bug. One or two people can work on that documentation bug. And then since there's 10,000 documentation bugs, you can all have one. Make it stronger. OK. You need to schedule the next meetup right away. Ideally, you actually schedule it before the current one happens. That's a little hard to do for your first one. So at your first one, get topics. Find somebody that will speak. Uh, find somebody that has a question, and you can go do the legwork and get her either a speaker or just do the research yourself. That's what I did for the second one. Somebody asked me a question I didn't know the answer to. I was ready to go for the second meeting. We talked all about it. Um, Follow-up email, uh, meet up again. They do provide tools to do that automatically, but you can create your own mailing list if you want. You can do this any way you want to. Meetup just does a lot of legwork for you. Thank the folks that participate. Yeah, whoa, whoa. It's, it's, a second, it's a second question, guy. He gets something different. What about frequency? What, what have you found that works? Sure. So I think, I think frequency is, is, is really a tough thing to handle. Uh, we're all busy professionals. Um, and it, it is hard to do it often enough. Um, and keep it going. I, I, I actually, that may be what happened in San Antonio at one point. They may have just burned themselves out. So no more than once a month. No more than once a month. Um, certainly you guys can chat anytime you want. You can email each other. You can do all that. But a physical meetup probably once a month is the max. I'd say as a minimum, though, every two months, except maybe in the summer you can go, you can skip all summer long if you want. A lot of people are traveling. It's hard to, it's hard to get speakers. Um, and, you know, there's fun things to go do in the summer, uh, especially, especially if you're trapped in a place that you don't want to be in the winter. 
<laughs> that's a good time to be having a meetup. Uh, so I'd say minimum, minimum every two months, most of the year. Um, but you really don't need any more than one a month. I think you can sustain yourself forever every other month. That, that is just fine, okay? Um, we skip a month every, uh, periodically. I was traveling a lot for personal reasons in March. We didn't have one. Or was it April? I, I, <laughs> it was March. It was March. All right. Um, thank the folks. Leave unstructured time at the beginning or end for more informal discussions. All right. So, th so we're right to that part of my little meetup here. I've got to check my watch. All right. So... Uh, it's good to see you all again. I know you drove a long way to be here for this meetup. Okay, you walked over from your hotel, but it's kind of like that. Um, has anybody got any horror stories from doing their first, uh, second, third OpenStack setup? Any horror stories? Raise your hand if you have a horror story. Okay, no horror stories. Uh, any wins? Anybody, anybody get their first OpenStack, or their first uh, meetup going? Anybody get their first OpenStack into production? There's no hands. Okay. But that's the kind of, yeah, Stefano's got his first meetup. He's, he's, he's well into his hundredth meetup. <laughs> Question, Stefano? Yeah. Funny, funny enough, I only helped bootstrap one. Uh, <laughs> all the others got really uh, up by themselves. So, yeah, the, what you were saying is all what I've been doing, what we've been doing in Italy. He, he's Mr. Community, if you guys don't know. He works for the foundation. He is Mr. OpenStack Community. Um, yeah, actually, there's two of us now. There's also Todd? Tom Fifield, yeah. Tom, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tom um, Fifield, it, yeah. He's been there a year now, I think. Maybe a little yes, more? Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, no, the, the, big, the big win for us was to reach out to um, companies who were already touching and um, uh, playing with OpenStack uh, in Milan. And they were just, you know, playing around, participating in the mailing list. And I spotted them, and I, was, I asked them, why don't you throw an event, and they were just waiting for someone to ask them. <laughs> so sometimes that, that's it. All it takes is just, just do it. They, All right, I already threw you a frisbee. This is a chapstick. I'll throw another one if it broke. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Stefano. All right, make it better connected. Okay, this is the page I want to actually go to, Stefano's page. You want to register your group with OpenStack Foundation. That's part of how you'll be discovered. People will actually go to the foundation to look for events. So I'm going to actually click on that. I'm going to drop out of my presentation right quick and just click the link. All right. On the mailing list page, there's a mailing list about community. You want to join that mailing list right now. You can go to your little tablets, your phones, your iPads, whatever you've got, your iPhones. You can join that mailing list right now. Um, add your group to the OpenStack users group list. All right, so let's go to that link. All right, who's somebody not from Colorado and not from my company? Raise your hand. Front row Joe, right there. Where are you from? What's your name and where are you from? Yeah, my name is Matt, I'm from Hungary. From Hungary, Budapest? Yeah. Oh, we had a, a, Bantu, a Bantu summit there a few years ago. Very nice city. Okay, Hungary. Let's see if I can find Hungary. Here we go, Hungary. Uh, meetup details are here. OpenStack Hungry Meetup Group. Are you the leader? Are you Martin? <laughs> <laughs> so right there. So now we're on the open. We're on the meetup page. That's what it'll look like. Um, you can put you can put the OpenStack logo in. Uh, this one's been going about as long as mine's been going. All right. Um, almost the same date even. Um, it's just that easy, folks. You put it on the OpenStack users group page, and you put it in Meetup, and those two together basically point back at each other, and now you're very discoverable. How was that? The hardest thing is finding people. All right, well, we can talk a little bit about that. I think Stefano covered it a little bit. Um, let's see, let's hit present. All right. Okay, so you want people, but you've also got to participate. So how do you participate? You speak at someone else's group. Okay, so you've got this, you've got this uh, 
cloud or big data team, some of them don't know anything about OpenStack. You can go be an, an emissary into their meetup, into their group, and talk about OpenStack. All of a sudden, you'll find that there's other people there doing OpenStack that you didn't know about and drag them back to your meeting as speakers, all right? If you volunteer, they kind of owe you, all right? Um, you need to know some people in the OpenStack community too. So I know a few people in the room, I know a few people in that room, and I knew a few people in that room, and I drag them to my meetings. Colorado is very fortunate. We have two PTLs. We have one in Fort Collins uh, named David Lyle, and we have another one in Boulder. Well, he actually lives right beside me in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, John Griffith, he's the PTL for Cinder. Um, I've dragged them both to meeting. We've got a director from the Open Daylight Foundation in Fort Collins. I drag him to a meetup. So these are all very public figureheads you can drag in. That's, that's easy. So, so even though we're kind of an extended community, none of those people live in Denver, by the way. Even though we've got an extended community, uh, we do have some resources. But you probably don't have any of those guys in your city. So what do you do? Oh, wait, I, I have another opportunity to ask questions. The guy that just walked in the room, say your name and tell us who, where, you, where you're from. San Diego? Cool, are you here for this meeting or the next one? It doesn't matter, you get a Frisbee. Because you talked at my summit. All right, any, other, any questions, really? All right, so people have asked a question over and over. How do I get speakers, how do I get sponsors? And, and it's really the same thing. Oh, oh, sorry, I messed up. All right, I'll get to that in a second. Who wants to come up and start their very first meetup right now? You want a meetup in your city that's going to be on you. Who wants to come up and do it right now? It's easy. I've, I've made it very easy for you. Somebody needs to come up on stage. Come on up. The stairs are over here to uh, this side. All right, you'll probably have to talk at my mic because did, I, didn't, I didn't have a hand, hand mic up. I forgot about that part. I forgot about this slide entirely. <laughs> All right. It's easy to start a community. All right. I'm? I'm Nick Campbell. He's Nick Campbell. Uh, and I'd like to talk about or ask about OpenStack. He'd like to ask about OpenStack, OK? And I'd like to hear if you have any lessons learned, experiences, uh, questions about OpenStack. All right. He's a natural leader, OK? Uh, this is the first meetup, right? All right. But you also have to plan the next one. Yeah. Uh, I'll be hosting the next meetup. Thank you. I'll be hosting the next meetup. Hold it up close. There you go. Yeah. To wherever you live. Okay. Yeah, yeah you don't actually have to hold it. <laughs> uh, I'll be hosting the next meetup uh, in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, next month. Next month. Okay. Wait, look for the announcement. Okay. All right. You just held your first meetup. And, and wait, he's on stage. New Bluetooth speaker from HP. Oh, uh, Probably switch it off and lay it down. And tell me your name again. Nick Campbell. Nick Campbell. All right. Thanks, Nick. Bang, done. It's just that easy. Thanks, Nick. A big thank you. All right, and one more thing. You guys have been all asking about this. Find sponsors. All right, I call it find sponsors. You might call it find speakers. You might call it find a meeting room. You might call it uh, find an interest group. Um, they'll help you. Sponsors will help you. They will help you find or fund speakers, meeting rooms, swag. I've been throwing things around in the room. You might have noticed that. I have more things to throw, too. Um, they'll help you with topics. They'll help you with membership. They'll help you with pizza. They'll help you with beer. They'll help you with an OpenStack Foundation birthday cake next month, oh, in July. Um, they become a part of your community. How do you find speakers and sponsors? You walk through those doors, you walk to the first booth you see. If they say no, you pshaw them, you walk to the next booth and you say, I'm in Lansing, Michigan, and I need a speaker next month. 
I'm going to be out of town. Somebody's got to cover for me. Don't you guys have a sales rep in the area? Don't you have somebody who really wants to win the entire university community here? That's how easy it is. That is how easy it is. And, and, and they might be sitting right next to you right now. All right. Who here came on their own dime, their own dollar, um, and is not sponsored by a company? Raise your hand. I'll give you six Frisbees. Whoa. All right, Every, everybody else in this room is a potential speaker for you, right? Because they all work for a company that's interested in OpenStack. Every other person in this room, I will come and speak at your group in Budapest any day of the week. What's that? That's, I mean, everybody at this event is a potential speaker for you. This is, this is the weird part, right? The second bullet says they may seek you out. I don't have to schedule speakers anymore at all. Speakers come find me. It's like a marketing mind for them. And now there's things I don't want them to talk about, and I say, no, that's not really appropriate for our group, um, and I'll go find a speaker, or somebody else will come and speak. Sometimes we just have discussions, because a lot of us are in the trenches doing operations, and we just want to learn from the other people that are in the trenches doing operations. Uh, yesterday, I think it was, HP gave a talk about high availability Neutron, which was exactly like a meetup group. It was exactly like a meetup group, and it was perfect. And it was, it was a packed house, people sitting on the floor. You said that some, uh you, you turn down some presenters or some people that want to come and talk. What are some of the topics that aren't appropriate for your group? Um, for our meetup, if you're really just trying to sell a product or service, I don't think that's appropriate. However, your same company that does sell that product or service probably has a more technical talk that they can give. They can get a speaker that can give a more technical talk. And I always turn that back. I don't just send them away. I said, that's not really the right thing. Do you got anything else in your bag, right? Um, uh, every single company out here has a sales force. Every single company out here has a technical team. And a lot of times there's overlap. Uh, I worked for Canonical for three years. We have what we call sales engineers. They know the product. They're not really trying to sell you the product. They're trying to inform you about the product. Um, but they also know OpenStack. They know OpenStack. They can give a completely unbiased, pure presentation on OpenStack. They will probably put up a slide that says Juju, though. I'm, I'm okay if they put up a slide that says Juju. I'm okay if they put up a slide that says DevOps Distilled. As long as the talk was about high availability Neutron, I'm going to be excited, okay? So, I, and, and I, think, I think that's what my community wants. They want, they want content, not to be a captive audience, okay? Um, and, and, but, but that's pretty successful. I'll tell you that my next three meetups are already booked, and it's all by distributions. I've got consecutive distributions lined up. Red Hat, Canonical, SUSE are all coming, and it, it's partly because they've got new things that have come out, um, and none of them have ever talked to our meetup before. That's another thing. They've never come and talked before, so they're all game. They're, they're not, if they say the bad thing, they won't come back, but uh, they're all game at this point, right? Um, I've never had a hardware vendor, real hardware vendor, come and talk. I will, I will probably be a little bit concerned the first time. Well, actually, SolidFire. No, SolidFire is a hardware software vendor. They have talked. Um, but all he did was the PTL Ascender. All he did was talk about Cinder. He didn't say SolidFire hardly at all. I think he handed out uh, SolidFire stickers. Uh, John's a great guy. I highly recommend him. If you can get him to come talk at your community, let him come talk. Um, recognize and thank your sponsors. All right, you asked a second question. I'm going to roll this one. All right. Uh, so the things I've been throwing around. Um, the, the Bluetooth thing was from HP. Um, Percona provided, I think, the, the orange Frisbees. Who wants an orange Frisbee? It's an asterisk, kind of. They don't throw as well. You'll have to claim it later. Boomerang. Boomerang. Uh, Swift Stack. All right. Who's got a question for me? This is a good one. No question? No question. OK. Come on up. And then walk back to that mic. So this is a signed copy by the author. 
Joe Arnold, right there, from Swiss Jack. And there's a mic, go ask your question. You always have your meetups, uh, like most user groups have them in the nights, the weekends. Uh, I'm from Calgary, Alberta. We're looking at kind of doing ours during the day, you know, maybe over lunch. That way, you know, it's, it's kind of like on your works company time you're going, you're not going on your time. We figure we might get more buy-in. I, th I think that's great. I think it works well if you're like in a metro area where people can like catch a sub over there or something, or if you're like in a really big downtown and just downtown people can go. I think that would be perfect. I think a lot of people would welcome that. Uh, if you bring beer, though, just kind of limit the beer. Okay. Um, uh, that's. Um, I, I've been to one like that. Um, I think it wasn't an open stack one. I think it was a puppet one once. It was like awesome. I mean, yeah, it was it was you know kind of the buffet food, and then come in and, we, and it was just puppet users. So it was great. Um, any more questions? Yep. American Press. You'd be amazed that almost every single meetup I go to, whoever is sponsoring that meetup says something like, on the very last side, we're hiring. It's not, it's not, you shouldn't be overt about it. I will tell you, there is so much interpersonal networking going at every meetup I've ever been to. Like, which company are you at now? Which company are you at now? Are you guys hiring? Who, you know, what's going on? Who's the hot company to go to work for? Happens every single time, every single time. It is, I mean, it, meetup is a social networking tool. And people are going to use the tools they have in their bag. And that's one of the tools in the social networking bag is recruiting. Did you already get a Frisbee? Did you get a Frisbee? Huh? Did you? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Go back. Okay, so thank your sponsors. That's, 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 that's important. Um, they're going to they're gonna help you build your meetup. Oh, let's see. Puppet Labs. I threw a shirt to somebody earlier. That was from Puppet Labs. Um, the OpenStack Foundation bought all these Frisbees. Thanks, Stefano. Um, I think it was, it was Tim Feifeld last year. So if you'll see, they have a little three on it. It was the OpenStack third birthday party a year ago. Um, we we could have bought we could have bought beer. Beer was donated. We didn't need to buy beer. We could have bought a birthday cake. I bought the birthday cake. Uh, OpenStack Foundation said, "Here's some money. Go spend it. Celebrate OpenStack's third birthday. The fourth birthday is coming up in July. You're welcome at my meetup. But I'll bet there's one in your neighborhood that's also having a birthday party. Um, so thank your sponsors, Puppet Labs, Ubuntu. Okay, so you guys have been out on the show floor. You know there's all sorts of things. Um, I've got." I've got Dell Chapstick. Who wants a Dell Chapstick? All right, there's some up on stage. Just come up afterwards. Um, I've got an OpenStack, a limited edition OpenStack Foundation pin. This one's broken. <laughs> when I started my first meetup, I didn't have a sponsor. I didn't have anything to do to give out. I didn't have anybody, anything to draw people in. I contacted the OpenStack Foundation and said, well, we can send you some stickers and some pins. And then they also sent me seven shirts of various sizes from different, media, from different, found, uh, different summits in the past. No two were alike. And I gave them out at my first meetup, and it was a big success. So here's some foundation pins. What else do I have in here? Oh, so another, another, another place. All right, here's, here's a trick. If you're going to have your first meetup and you don't have anything ready to go, stick around till Friday or even maybe later today. All these people that are tearing down booths don't want to take their 4,000 shirts home with them. Just put 12 shirts in your bag, go, and you'll have 12 shirts to hand out at your first meetup. That's where these very nice, shiny Ubuntu pins came from a year ago. I'm still giving them out. Um, that, that's how you do it. That, that's really how it is. Um, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, no, ask him to turn off the mic. Can you turn off my mic?